Before we start overclocking the CPU, we first need to find out how far we can push the reference clock. The reference clock doesn't contribute to performance itself, but it can be used to fine-tune the frequency of the CPU and other components, making sure we get the maximum performance they are capable of. If you have a non-Black Edition CPU, where the multipliers are locked and cannot be increased beyond their stock setting, you will be using the reference clock to do all of your overclocking. Begin by raising the reference clock to 275 MHz. This value is probably greater than most motherboards can handle, and more than you will need. When we did that, the CPU, HTLink, CPU NB, and memory speeds went way up. We're going to turn down the multipliers, so the frequency of each component is at or below its stock setting. So for this CPU, it needs to be below 3200 MHz. The CPU North Bridge and HT-Link frequency needs to be below 2000 MHz. And the memory below 1600 MHz. Now all of the other components are at or below their stock settings. So the only component we'll be stressing is the reference clock. The system probably won't boot with the reference clock set to 275. 250 MHz is more realistic. Just about every motherboard can handle 250 MHz, so it's safe. I'll hit F10 and say yes to save and exit. The system restarted and is going into Windows. Once in Windows, we'll start Prem95 and use the Blend setting to stress test the system. With Prime 95 running, you need to look for these icons to turn red, or an error message in one of these windows, or if the system freezes, or blue screens and reboots, you've pushed the reference clock too far. Let Prime 95 run for about 15 minutes. If the system is stable, reboot, go into the BIOS, and raise the reference clock by 5 MHz, and test again in Prime95 on the Blend setting. Continue upping the reference clock until the system becomes unstable. Once the system becomes unstable, restart, go back into the BIOS, and lower the reference clock by 5 MHz, and test again for 30 minutes. If the system is stable, that is your maximum reference clock speed. If it fails, reduce the reference clock speed until the system passes a 30-minute Prime95 blend test. Take note of your motherboard's maximum reference clock speed. As long as the speed is 260 MHz or more, that should be all the reference clock speed you will need to overclock the other components. After performing these tests on our motherboard, the maximum stable reference clock speed is 270 MHz. The last thing we're going to do here in Lesson 4 is replace the stock AMD cooler with a third-party cooler. We did lots of tests before we started making these videos to see how far we could overclock the CPU using the stock cooler. Basically, if we kept the CPU voltage at its stock setting, which in our case is 1.4 volts, the CPU stayed at or below its maximum safe temperature of 62 degrees Celsius. If we increased the CPU voltage to 1.425 volts, the CPU temp went above 62 degrees C. To find our CPU's maximum stable speed, we need to be able to increase the voltage going to it. This new CPU cooler should drop the CPU temps low enough for us to do that safely. To remove the stock AMD cooler, I'm first going to disconnect the fan's power cable from the motherboard. Next, I'll rotate the cam handle from left to right to loosen the lever. Press down on the lever and push away from the cooler on both sides of the cooler. Then pull up on the cooler and it will come away from the CPU. This might require some force because the thermal compound tends to be sticky. Use a dry paper towel 
to remove most of the thermal compound from the CPU. A cotton swab dipped in 90% or higher isopropyl alcohol will remove the rest. The process for installing a third-party cooler onto the motherboard and CPU is different for each model of cooler. This cooler is made by Arctic Cooling, called the Freezer 64 Pro. It's very similar to the Freezer 7 Pro Rev2 we installed in the Intel Core i5 and i7 CPU overclocking videos. Where that cooler was made to work on both Intel and AMD CPUs, the Freezer 64 Pro is made specifically for AMD CPUs. The cooler already has thermal compound applied to it, and it installs basically the same way as a stock AMD cooler. Around the CPU, there is a retention base that is used to hold the cooler in place. I'll lower the cooler onto the CPU. The cooler attaches to the base using two brackets, one on each side. First, attach the side without the locking lever using your thumb to press down and your index finger to press towards the CPU bracket. On the other side of the cooler, attach the side with the locking lever to the retention module base. Rotate the cam handle from the right to the left to secure the cooler to the motherboard. Then connect the fan's power cable to the motherboard. I'll power the computer on and go into the BIOS. Back in Lesson 2, we recorded the CPU's idle and load temperatures using the stock AMD cooler. We need to change all of the frequency, multiplier, and voltage settings back to defaults so we can compare the temperatures now with the new third-party cooler to what they were when the stock cooler was installed. I'll hit F12 to bring up the profiles, and I'm going to load the default profile we saved back in Lesson 3. It has all of the settings set to their defaults. I'll press F10 and Enter to save and exit. Back in Windows, I'll start CPU Temp to get the CPU idle temperature. It's 28 degrees C. The idle temp with the stock cooler was 38 degrees C. That's a 10 degree improvement. I'll start Prime 95 on the blend setting just as we did in Lesson 2. Prime 95 has been running for 20 minutes, and the CPU load temp is 48 degrees C. That's another 10 degree improvement. Next, in Lesson 5, we will show how to find the maximum stable CPU speed on both a Black Edition and non-Black Edition CPU.